uh, number nine, yesterday I told you in my list that we need to get current, so I took the liberty of ordering some of you guys some merch from my girl Charlie D'Amelio's website. Uh, for the guys, I got these sweet beanies with Charlie's motto, I-Y-A-M-T. What's that saying for? Uh, and for Robin, what else? <laughs> A fun Charlie hoodie. Uh, if you uh, she's going to wear that with baggy jeans mm -hmm. and some Converse. You can really hip it up. The collection is based on Charlie's hit song, If You Ask Me To, Pat. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I will uh, let her explain it. All right. Okay, oh, here it is. Be good. A bit more great. into the meaning of the song, I think you can interpret the words if you ask me to so many ways, whether it's a positive or a negative or, you know, who's who's asking? Who? What are you doing? For me, I feel like it's about, you know, in the story, a girl that will do anything, she's like hopelessly wishing that this guy will give her a sliver of attention, you know? So she's, if he asked her to, she'd do it. Oh, that oh nice? my God. Like Solomon the Wise, right there, yes. right? A whole bunch of stuff in just two words. They're profound. Uh, and if you know, you know. Uh, I can't wait to see you guys slay uh, in these sweet fits. Uh, when they come in, they'll be here any day. All right, great. It's going to be exciting. You can see how she's so transformational, yes, right? Yes, Just when you're able to crystallize thoughts she's like so, that. She's real. Yeah. Which is what real. I like about her. That's how you're number one. Yeah. yeah. Hashtag yeah. real. She's the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. Like, like, I remember seeing a video of um, Bruce Springsteen here, how he wrote a song. Yeah. And it was like... So exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's the younger generation. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It was yeah. exactly. Yeah, no, yeah, she is. She yeah. is. Well, Larry, you keep your eye on the demos, and we just keep bringing her sure. in and up and watch pretty soon. Half our audience is going to be 25-year-olds. Mm -hmm. right. We picked up one yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number eight, you may recall our annual holiday poinsettias had some problems this year. They, uh, they wilted. Oh. Uh, so here's an idea for next year. We'll fill the studio with Christmas cacti instead. Uh, they're named Christmas cactus for a reason. They only bloom close to the holiday in early winter. Oh. They thrive in a humid climate. Wow. And if you've ever been to our newsroom during the winter, it's like a sauna in there. Is it really? I thought it was cold. Oh, yeah. It depends if you're by a window. Uh, right? yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're by the window. Uh, you can keep them in there all year long and water them about twice a week. And here's a fun fact. I love facts, but fun no. facts are even better. Uh, they have Easter and Thanksgiving cacti. What? Yeah. Uh, both of them sprout close to their namesake holidays. Mm. That's tricky because, you know, Easter... That's a moving target, right? Like that can yeah. be in March, can be in yeah, April. Yeah, it can be in April. But generally around Good the same time. for them for timing yeah. that out. Yeah. That's not easy. I can't get, you know, my schedule figured out here. They're blooming right on time. Yeah. That's yeah. a fun fact. That's well, point. assuming the cactus are Christian, I think we're projecting that, a little you're bit. You're right yeah. about yeah. that. Some, some of them may be Buddhist. That. We don't know. Yes. Yeah. That's a great understanding. All Ooh. right, number seven. Here are some great headlines we came across while scrolling on our phones. These are real headlines from The Atlantic. What squirrels taught me after life... <laughs> about life after divorce. Here's one about a European soccer match. Red cards handed out in the oh. Barca Atletico game for hair pulling and squeezing of the pee pee. Oh. Oh. Well, oh my kind of headline. Yeah. And this one, woman who tattooed eyeballs purple and blue <gasps> losing eyesight. Oh, oh. no. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. Oh, oh gosh. Mm. Not surprised? Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Number six, check out this video shared by Chinese media on Twitter. Chinese astronaut Deng King Ming playing ping pong in space. The ball always returns to his paddle, but he's not hitting it against anything. Look at this. Yeah. What is that? Back That's a bit of a mystery. How does it keep bouncing back to him? Some scientists have a theory that the ball is attached to a long tether, and that's how it's able to come back to him. And notice how it's hovering. That could also be an indication that it's attached to something. Mm. It's all fun and games until they beat us to the moon again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, number five. Uh, the praying mantis is a big insect that mostly eats bees and wasps, but every now and then, not often, but every now and then, the praying mantis will try to take down a hummingbird oh, no. and a feeder. Oh, no. And really? that is what is what? happening here in a video shot oh, by Michael man. Lewinsky. In a few seconds, we'll show a photo of what it looks like when the mantis succeeds in no. hitting the hummingbird. Here we go. If you don't like that sort of thing, look Why away. Why does it fly away? Watch, it's hungry. Just watch. Scientists oh, no. are a little bit confused. What? <gasps> oh, boy, oh. That's, uh... that's the end result? That's graphic. Uh Oh, it's a different one. Yeah. 
Oh. Scientists are a little confused about why they would do oh, this. showing that. Since they could never eat the whole bird. Oh. That. That's great, though. This yeah. is like science class. <laughs> yeah. If you're in science, you can take today off if you watch that. Yeah. In school. <laughs> I think I saw it's lower intestines. Oh. Uh, that's fun stuff, right? Yeah. Wow. You're welcome. Yeah. Do you like that, Larry? Uh, yeah, I like science. Yeah, but boy, that was so. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, a little disturbed huh? by that. Do we have to give a warning on that now? We like to give a warning. We're blocking everything out. Well, I'm sure this will be, be able a, to deal with something, right? This will be a nicer story, I'm sure. What, right. what have you got, Patrick? I'm sure this will make it compensate for it. Number four, uh, mountain lions, which is oh, <laughs> no. a number of ways. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, which are also called cougars and pumas, are one of the most dangerous wild cats in North and South America. Oh, no. Uh, and it, when it's mating season, they communicate with a blood curdling scream that sounds like it's from a horror movie. Uh, ask a serious camper what it's like to hear it at night, and they will tell you very scary. So here are a few clips of what they sound like with another clip of a police officer. Let's just check it out. What? Wow. Oh my gosh. Jeez. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> You're darn right. <laughs> I'm going back to the car. And, 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 yeah. But he's trying to look cool about it. <laughs> it sounds like someone's screaming. Yeah. Yeah, it's it does. terrifying. Huh. Wow. Ooh. Number three, courtesy of Time Magazine, there are 100 maids, butlers, chefs, florists, and ushers who are part of the full-time staff at the White House. So whenever someone new starts working there, these employees are often the ones who show them the ropes. Even most incoming first families don't know that there are six floors in the White House. When they first arrive, First Lady Michelle Obama reminded her own staff that they were now on the turf of the White House staff and to be polite. Mrs. Obama also asked them to close up a wall in Molly's room to give her more privacy. She didn't know uh, that would require approval. President Obama wanted one of those uh, shower heads that had the waterfall from overhead. That didn't require approval. Mrs. Clinton woke up one night to care for a sick Chelsea. She went into a kitchen that she had uh, created on the second floor and started making eggs. A butler interrupted and said he would bring an omelet to Chelsea. But Mrs. Clinton just wanted to care for her sick daughter as she had before. George H.W. Bush and the staff were so fond of each other that the president cried when it was time to say goodbye. And before they left for the Capitol uh, swearing in ceremony on the final day, Barbara Bush raced through all the rooms to hug each butler mm. privately. Wow. Oh. All right, number two, here are uh, just a few commercials from AT&T in the early 90s that some people believe predicted the future. The commercials came out in 1993. Have you ever borrowed a book from thousands of miles away across the country without stopping for directions or sent someone a fax? From the beach, you will, and the company that'll bring it to you, AT&T. Have you ever paid a toll without slowing down? Bought concert tickets from a cash machine. Wow, look at that. Yeah, perfect. They got you so will. much right, except for the company that we're doing. They knew it was coming. Yeah. They just didn't know it was going to be somebody be out else. Of our offices. Oh. Oh, yeah, and that was Tom Selleck, Mary. Sure was. Sure was. Tom Selleck. Sure enough. Yeah, anyway. All right, right, number, number one. one. Yeah. Uh, do you guys like this Ariana Grande? Oh, oh she's got yeah. a great voice. Yeah, I sure do. I'm going to keep my favorite song of hers private for right now. But uh, check this out. It's Ariana Grande's first interview when she got her very first role in musical theater. Here we go. 
<laughs> this is your very oh, first show. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, to come out and do this, the audition, was it scary to do the audition? No, it was actually fun. I was excited. Oh, and what were you thinking when Bob phoned you to tell you the big news? I was, I, I, I was just like, who did I get? And he's like, Annie. And I'm like, ah! I was like celebrating. So she's eight years old. Uh, let's listen to her at eight. Stealing the show here. Here's a way the cobwebs and the sorrow till there's none. When I'm stuck with the day that's gray and lonely, I just think I'll see if she hits the high note here. Okay. Wow. Good for her. Pretty good. Yeah, right. yeah, theater good. in so South Florida, yeah. age eight. You wonder, man, you're doing it for the love if you're playing that dog, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the back end of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer for many years. Hey, there's no small yeah. parts. No. no. That's what they say, <laughs> right? No, that's a lie. <laughs> but that is what they say. Wow, well, that was great. All right, that was a lot of fun. That's a nine that's and nine. That's nine, yep.